Hi there. <laughs> My name is Janet No, and I am a recovering financial analyst from Wall Street. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, from the day I was born, I seem to try my very hardest to be the perfect little Asian daughter. It's, it was as if I was born with this innate drive to seek perfection. It's in my Korean blood. I came in at exactly eight pounds. <laughs> I wasn't eight pounds there then, but I came in at exactly eight pounds, never cried or wailed like the other babies, and my mom would tell you that my diapers didn't even stink. I was reading and writing in both Korean and English by the time I was two, had multiplication figured out by four, and by six, while other kids were doing cartwheels on the lawn, I was reading Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. <laughs> and why did I try so badly to be a highly effective person at the age of six? It's who I was told to be. Someone else was writing my soundtrack for me. I was told that struggling was a key requirement in order to win at life. A necessary struggle. I grew up listening to stories of my mom's family escaping the North Korean border just in time to make it over to the South to safety. My dad would guilt me into finishing all my food because we were lucky that we didn't have to scrape the bark off of trees. Hearing their stories of sacrifice and literally escape, I developed a deep gratitude for life that also coexisted with this guilty conscience. I just knew that I had to be successful and make something of myself to pay back my parents and provide for them as well. This sense of duty made me overachieve. In elementary school, I earned straight A's and was frequently bullied by other Asian students, if you could believe that, for simply doing too well. So to cope, I ran to the piano, my salvation, my escape. I practiced eight hours a day and eventually started to play with orchestras. Um, by the time I was in middle school, I was performing in international piano competitions, but really, piano and music um, were a way for me to validate myself. Because I was getting picked on at school, I had to find a way to feel like I was worth something. At 15, I applied for and was granted a full scholarship to Yale. While earning a degree in both economics and East Asian history, I was overworked, overstressed, and overanxious. As was always the theme, though, the piano was my salvation, my confidant. Diploma in hand, I secured a six-figure salary on Wall Street as a big, bad investment banker. And proud parents, money rolling in, success in the air. My future was bright. But it didn't take long for me to realize that something wasn't right. I was busy winning, working, sending money home. But I was also crying myself to sleep every night, running 15 miles a day on the weekends. I was depressed, even though I didn't know it at the time, numbing my pain with chocolate, marathons, and the occasional eating disorder. My perfectionism was slowly killing me. 
There is a word that we use in Korean to describe an indescribable emotion. It's a complex feeling in the gut that is a sadness, almost gently caressing hope. That word is han. Han is a unique mix of happiness and joy, always commingling with guilt and this literal pain in the abdomen, as if to tell you that everything good must come with a price. It's a feeling that we believe is programmed within us. It's so deeply ingrained in our lives and culture that we accept that it's passed from the mother's womb to the child. And nobody thinks, nobody thinks to talk about it. So how would you fight against a force like that? That's when it hit me. What if life could be like a kaleidoscope? What if a situation could simply be seen from a completely different perspective, just with one quarter turn of this familiar child's toy? Let's take a phrase as simple as, your good be better. In an Asian home, your good be better might mean you're good, but not good enough. So get better, do more. But I think there's a more proactive, positive way to see this. You're good, so now go discover how much more you can be. Think of all the wonderful possibilities. I was determined to be better, and with one shift of my own kaleidoscope, I decided to do it my way, as Frank Sinatra would say. It was time to trade in who they wanted me to be for who I was born to be. <laughs> I went back to the piano, back to music, my oasis. I knew that in order to set out on my journey, I had to live authentically. And the piano was the obvious choice for a fresh start. Back to zero. My parents were going to kill me. <laughs> I started um, writing short songs on my commutes to work, testing them on audiences at open mics in the village on, and on weekends. And at the same time, I was trying to make sense of my business path, so I took the GMAT and was about to apply to business school when one beautiful, sunny Wall Street weekday, this unknown force deep within me, seemed to guide me to get up from my desk and walk out early from work. I was curious, what did the creative people do during the day while I was slaving away inside, feeling like a data monkey? <laughs> I wandered to the one area in New York City where I feel like all the creatives hang out all the time, and that is, of course, for those of you who know, uh, who know uh, New York City, Washington Square Park, right? Yeah, I see some heads nodding in the audience. But what caught my eye was a beautiful big purple flag with the letters NYU. And it was sticking out like a beautiful sore thumb right smack in the middle of a street called Broadway. Curious, I scuttled in and got on, you know, whatever, got off whatever floor the elevator doors opened to and immediately saw a sign on the wall, graduate musical theater writing. And I thought, who in the world would go to school for something as specific as that? <laughs> but rather than dismiss this discovery, which I would have done on any other day, I heeded this curiosity and followed the signs to the administrative office. When I got there, I was told that there was going to be an open house that very same night. I mean, what are the chances? <laughs> could it be fate? I thought. So I attended. And instantly, I was intoxicated by the energy of the people in that room. Creators, musicians, actors, writers, who, composers, who were so passionate about telling their stories through art. And something about being able to tell your own story and write your own script resonated with me on the deepest level. And I realized this was what I wanted to do with my life. I always was a fan I, of creating your own luck. So I applied. And in fact, I'll play you a verse from one of the songs that I submitted. I'm setting sail for the sun. I'm setting sail 
with the crew of one, right? Just one. Don't need the wind to take me away from all that's made me weaker. Oh, why does it take so long? Yeah, so long. Like, you want to hear the chorus? Watch them burn. You should know if you come for me. I'm rewriting history, and I'm on my way past the place of no return. I'll let them burn, and so on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, could you believe I was not only accepted, but they offered me a full ride. So I was, <laughs> thank you. So I was able to go. And I mean, this was a sign that I couldn't ignore. This, this was like a calling from the universe. And this is exactly what became the opening notes to my soundtrack. How was I able to take myself from the cubicles of Wall Street to the stages of Broadway, it was simply a small shift of the kaleidoscope. <laughs> it's a real photo. <laughs> this actually exists. <laughs> I had to be willing to disappoint my parents by foregoing a stable, well-paying career to go into the arts. I battled with concerns like, how will you support yourself? Why did you bother going to Yale at all? You're not using your pedigree. <laughs> and the transition was really rough on all of us. But the gratification was this. Rather than follow a written script, one that's stamped by my ancestors with approval, I was able to start writing my own script. For the first time in my life, I had blank music paper in front of me, and the notes could be all mine. Because I was willing to pivot the kaleidoscope on my life, I was willing to pivot my life itself. I could think and dream bigger, and the perspective seemed to get wider with every twist of the kaleidoscope. The colors more vibrant. Gazing at the lights on Broadway, where now my dreams lie, I also gained an appreciation for light itself. Light the illuminator of one's kaleidoscope. We must also then be responsible for our own light. Since graduating, I've now sung under those Broadway lights alongside some of the best performers in the world. I've performed some of my original songs at the Lincoln Center, written two musicals, and even workshopped a piece I wrote with the original members of um, Hamilton. <laughs> I did not know that I could dream this big. But at the same time, on the other hand, I've never experienced as many setbacks and rejections as I have in the last couple of years. Musical theater is not easy, folks. <laughs> and I've often sat at the keyboard and the piano, wondering if I could eke out another note or sing another tune. I think this is what people call imposter syndrome nowadays. Right? I was worried. What if people found me out? I mean, who am I fooling calling myself an artist? But I worked hard to overcome my feelings of unworthiness, of feeling like an imposter, by acknowledging the weaknesses and addressing them for what they were. When a music colleague of mine I respect told me that I wasn't really a singer, I rose to the challenge. I sought out the best and most brilliant vocal coaches in the city, and boy, has it made a difference. <laughs> yeah, you should have seen how I sang before. <laughs> um, when I realized that I wanted to get better at the piano, I reached out to a Juilliard-trained colleague of mine who, actually, as children, we competed against each other. 
because I wanted to grow and keep my accountability in check. And now, now I am writing my soundtrack. I wake up every single day getting to do what I love. I get paid to write songs. I've written for feature films. I get to teach and share music with students in under-resourced communities, like the one I grew up in, to give back. It's a different kind of success, different from the metrics on Wall Street, for sure, but one that is more meaningful and authentic for me because I am now able to live life through the kaleidoscope that I get to turn when I need to. So I'll leave you all with this. Go out and get your own kaleidoscope. Every day, just for fun, give it a turn. If you don't like what you see at first, try again. You are now standing on the new edge of possibility. I promise you'll eventually find what you love. I've seen the impossible looking through the right lens. And now I am writing my soundtrack. My parents actually uh, came from Seattle to support me. So this one is dedicated to them. It's just a pattern, the same routine Comes and goes like spring and fall Wait for the morning, you'll see it'll be Just like nothing happened at all People who hurt, they say things that aren't true They're so blinded by their pain but don't let the hurt cast a cloud over you Or you'll be standing in the rain I'll share with you a secret Between just you and me Whenever you might need it You'll find it here, the key There's a place that I know where we always can go not too far away from here Where there's sun in the shade And you're never afraid Or worries disappear There's a rainbow in the sky From a cloud that's passing by And we've never seen a light so bright I'll help you find that place Thank you.